Hi. For weeks, I've been trying to come up with a question, and I haven't. <laughs> Even though I want to know a lot, <laughs> I started listening to your workshops since the beginning of this year, and I feel that I'm still crawling, even though I can relate to everything that you speak about, and I agree. But there is an area in my life that I have a hard time, let's see, I have a lot of resistance. Well, then that's an area that you want to deactivate rather than activate. You see, when you say, I had a hard time coming up with a question, or I had a hard time coming up with an issue, what that saying is that's not the advantage. It's like saying, Oh, I need to look for trouble so that Abraham can help me solve my trouble. And we say, why not just let sleeping dogs lie? Why activate them? Are you afraid that you'll trip over them and they'll bite you in the night? Yes. Really? Yes. I understand what you're saying. And well, yeah, I understand what you're saying, but uh, let's just ask you some questions. We're asking okay. all of you, but these are specifically pointed to you. Would you rather feel good than bad? And these questions good. are going to sound silly, but we really want you to take them as serious questions. Would you rather feel good than bad? Yes. And can you tell the difference between feeling good and feeling bad? Sometimes I can't. Well, then poke at it longer and it'll become more clear. You see, we don't believe that that's true. We believe that you can always tell the difference between what feels good and what feels bad. Sometimes you can get focused upon something that feels bad and badder and badder and badder and badder and badder, but there's no question in your mind that it doesn't feel good. Some things feel worse than other things, but some things feel way better than other things. And right. so our question to all of humanity is why would you ever spend any time focused upon something that feels bad? And the answer to that has to be because I don't know any better because I don't know about law of attraction because I don't understand that my inner being isn't focused there. It has to be a misunderstanding of the laws of the universe. There is no justification that is valid for why anyone would stay focused upon something that doesn't feel good. Okay. You're just not that masochistic. You are. Okay. Aren't. So let me just be more specific then. Is it going to make you feel bad? No, no. It's not for that reason. Is that sometimes I cannot see on that specific situation what is the least resistance way. But here's the thing. So that's like saying, I'm at a buffet and here are 50 things over here that are delightful. They're good for me. They're good to eat. I like them. I really, really like them. It's the most magnificent spread of buffet that I've ever seen anywhere. And over here, there is an item that every time I eat it, I vomit. <laughs> Let me see, what should I eat? <laughs> yep, I better eat that. I better eat that bad thing. Better eat that. Why? Well, my mother ate it her mother ate it it's just what we do okay and we say that's just dumb yeah i hear you you know better you can tell by the way you feel but there is this human maybe even universal desire to make what is bad feel better law of attraction just never lets that happen you can't take what feels bad and make it feel better but you can focus on what feels good and cause it to gain more momentum, which will cause what feels bad to not come into your experience anymore. The misunderstanding is that, and you sort of started that way. You said, I've been really trying to think of what I might ask. And it's sort of like, I need to find some issue that is really worthy of digging into and solving it. No, it's not that. No, no. I wanted clarity in a specific situation that I have a lot of momentum going and resistance and I did not know how to phrase my question in a way for me to get clarity. That's because you can't. When you set it up like that, when you say, I have an issue that's got a lot of momentum and I want to get clarity about it, our answer is then you've got to forget about it for now. In other words, you've got to accomplish the unconditioned of clarity. 
Mm. You've got to accomplish the uncondition of clarity. You can't focus on the condition that brings confusion mm. and take it to clarity. You've got to focus on something that allows clarity and something that allows clarity and something that allows clarity. And after a while, confusion will just fall by the wayside because clarity is what's dominant within you. Does that make sense to you? It feels that I have done that before and it didn't, I end up going back to actually the problem because it is something very present in my life and it's well, we understand things that feel present in your life remain present in your life because they keep being present in your life. And we know that you want to say logically to us, I just can't pretend that it isn't there. And we say, but you can diffuse its presence by thinking around it. You can refuse to look at it so specifically. You can look at it more generally. You can look at it in a bouquet of other things. You can put it in the context of all things. You can be saying all of these things are working really well. And then here's this little budding thing that's in there that's not working so well in other words you just got to find some way to diffuse it but you cannot pinpoint a problem and ask it to go away it defies law in the moment that you pinpoint it it will become more and it will get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until eventually it will demand your undivided attention there's just no getting around it law of attraction makes it so so okay can I ask a question regarding actions yeah yeah, I do have the tendency that, you know, go to action, wrestle, take to the ground and try to Most solve the problem. Most people do because they can see some results with action, but it's paltry, pitiful, puny progress. <laughs> okay. I need to listen to that because... We know, that's why we're telling you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> because th that's where my confusion comes is, okay, I will just totally disconnect from the problem so I can, you know, give some breathing air and think about something that I can feel good about it. Hard not to think about that thing that you're thinking about, but you got to find some way to think about exactly. something else. <laughs> exactly. But then if I think about... We spent the whole time that you've been sitting in this chair trying to talk you out of talking about it, but you're like a dog on a bone. You just keep going over there and then we go over here and then you go over there and we go over here and then you think, well, maybe I can get him to listen if I say it this way. And then we go over there and then you say, well, maybe I can get him to talk about it if I go about it this way. But we are determined because we're over here with your solution. We're over here with what you want and you can't get to where you want to be by going about it in the way that you're going about it. And that's why you keep going back to it in your own words. You keep going back to it. You got to find some way of detaching from it. And the only way you can detach from it is by attaching to something else, by giving your attention to something else, by looking at what is working, by giving your attention to what you do want. I hear you. And, and I understand that. We know you do. But that's the problem with me. There you go again. <laughs> there you go again. There are limiting beliefs that I feel responsible for certain people or some kids in this situation. Ah, blah, blah, blah. blah. <laughs> I hear you, but it's still. <laughs> you see, reality, what is, is compelling, isn't it? Because you can see it and hear it and smell it and taste it and touch it. They call you, they talk to you, they want things from you, they evoke feelings from you. We get it, we understand that what is is very compelling and that's why so many teachers and we're talking about it in a way that you haven't heard before but it's a subject of unconditional love unconditional unconditional you have to find a way to connect with source and so what that's actually saying is if there's a condition that deprives you of source and it does and you know it does because you feel bad when you think about it if there is a condition we don't care if you gave birth to it if there is a condition that deprives you of your alignment, you've got to let it go for a while. You cannot sacrifice your alignment for the condition or you'll never be able to improve the condition. It will not improve. So you have to unconditionally care about your alignment so much. So sometimes people say, well, okay, I'll do that so that I can help that. Now you're looking back at the condition again. 
We say, no, we don't want to talk about that anymore. We just want to talk about how it feels to have clarity, how it feels to feel love. Okay. But I want to talk about clarity and love as it relates to that. No, no, you're not going to be able to go there yet because you're too practiced on that. So we want to talk about love and clarity and fun. And you say, I just can't go. I'm too wadded up in all of this. So we say, then take a nap. And when you wake up, you won't be quite that wadded up. So you wake up and you're not that wadded up. And then you think about that and then you're that wadded up it's habits of thought but eventually when you know the process if we can convince you if you believe what we're saying if you believe that your desire in life is to align with source energy who holds dear and strong and specific and steady all of the results relative to everything that you want if you can find a way of find an alignment with that general alignment with that every problem in your world will dissolve because in your absence of attention to it it cannot exist you say really really are you saying that I can solve the problems of people that I care about yeah your power of influence is that strong you have the ability to see them as your source sees them you have the ability to see them as their source sees them you have the ability to be the provider of such influence that when they are in your vicinity that they cannot feel the way that they formerly felt you have the ability to harness that much energy that creates worlds and flow it in the direction of someone that you care about but you got to practice it you've got a hook to the energy before you can begin to do that you see and so that's why this matters so much this is what this pre-birth agreement with both of you is about that's what it's about it's about someone saying I'm not going to be your path of least resistance you're gonna to have to find your own path of least resistance I'm not gonna jump through all the hoops so that I can just be an object of your attention where you can just feel good when you look at me you're gonna to have to work for your alignment with me and we say those people who are stubborn like that really serve you well and those pleasers they teach you conditional love why can't you be more like that person when I think about that person I'm happy why can't you be more like that because I am your gift of alignment <laughs> you'll just get dependent on more like me and before you know it, you'll be demanding that everybody be just the way you want them to be and before you know it you're gonna be off in a really lonely place because nobody's really working for your alignment everybody's sort of in this for their own you see strong words but so helpful so helpful we've beaten you down <laughs> yeah what can I say after that really <laughs> really really it's sort of like no point in going there again because we're so clear and so sure and so happy about where this is going and so confident that you're getting what you want and so happy about what you've put in your vortex and so eager for you to just feel that and so eager for you to not need one thing to change in order to feel that oh that's freedom that's freedom that's freedom enough really good really good makes you sort of like all those problem children more doesn't it <laughs> no no you still don't like them <laughs>